morning everyone well it's Sunday morning it is extremely foggy out it's like 34 degrees out we did get a hard frost last night I told you that was coming um, but I'm out looking in the fields because they're talking rain later today it didn't rain hard uh, yesterday it rained early morning yesterday during the day it didn't rain uh, last night it didn't rain and now it's supposed to be sunny out this morning after this fog burns off and the rain's supposed to hit about five o'clock today well I have enough time to get everything moved back to the farm get the planters hooked up filled and probably plant those fields if or before it rains if this fog burns off in time because I don't like moving equipment in this fog because of the fact that the equipment's so big this fog is so thick and dense that people coming 55 miles an hour at me down the road aren't gonna see me until it's too late so there's a safety issue when moving heavy big equipment in this this thick of fog but I'm walking around one of the little four acre chunks of fields that uh, I'm going to plant. I want to plant weed in as well. And it's a little tacky, but I think I can, I think we can squeak some weed in here. The other, the big, bigger field that I want to plant weed in, I went and looked at that on my way here. And that one I think I can plant weed in. It's just, just dry enough that I could probably squeak the weed into it. So. We're going to attempt it. We're going to attempt to plant wheat today before the rain hits by 5 o'clock. So, looking, I can see the moon up there, so the fog is burning off. The sun's coming up, so once the sun comes up, the fog's going to burn off faster. So, yeah, come along for the ride. Let's get some wheat planted. It is so nice when you just back right up and the pen goes in just like that oh yeah today is gonna be a good day so far I've managed to get everything back to the farm I got the globe on the tractor that globe up there with the yellow top on there that is this reads the satellites for the GPS and works the auto steer and tells me what I've planted and where I haven't planted and things like that. I'll run through that today when I'm planting. Um, as you can see, I backed the tractor up. I got the hitch switched over. I got it hooked to the planters. The planters aren't hooked to the tractor yet. So we need to get those hooked up, get them filled with seed, and then I'm going to go plant the little four acre chunk out here just so I can adjust and calibrate my population and everything and then from there we'll go over to the bigger field and plant. So I guess I got to find my magnet mounts and all the other stuff for my camera so you guys can see me do all this stuff. So I guess I'll go look around for that stuff now. Alright, I just set you guys up on a tripod over there. That way I can get this thing hooked up. It takes a couple minutes to do it. You got to hook hydraulics up. You got to hook the electronics up. You got to swing the jack around. It's not just a drop a pen and go with most of this equipment. Not to mention, I got to figure out which hydraulic lever goes in what. So, if I can find the hole for the pin here, there we go. Um, yeah, so I got an electrical. The electrical all runs over at the top. Hydraulics. I gotta do it the safety chain still yet. Let's get that hooked up while I'm thinking about it. Alright. Safety
as you can see, we've had an issue. This seal right here, which goes in here, blew out. So now I'm trying to get a hold of the John Deere dealer, their emergency parts line, to see if I can get run up to Reese to get a rebuild kit for this hydraulic motor. I'm waiting for them to call me back. Well, I got my parts. Now it's time to rebuild the hydraulic pump. Garbage! Well, as you can see, I got it all apart. This little booger right here, that's the seal that went bad on me, that blue. So, now, we're going to put it all back together with all new gaskets. So all these gaskets here and all these seals are coming out, and all those are the new ones going in. Let's get this sucker together. So what I'm going to do is, this might make it kind of a lengthy video, but I'll show you how to rebuild this particular hydraulic pump. Let me get the camera set here. You don't need to see my face while I'm doing this. So now I'm going to take the seal that was bad, I'm going to replace it with a new one. I'm going to get that in there just like so. It just shoves down inside there. sure it gets a tight seal there. Hang on, I'm going to grab a tool real quick. Alright, what I do is usually I find a socket that fits just perfect inside of there. You take a mallet and just kind of just give it all some love taps. Just something just to just to seat it seat it in there tight and then we have to get a new whoop, move the camera new snap ring goes down inside of there Maybe if I can get my hands to work like they should. That's in there. Perfect. So then this seal. Now let's move you guys back over here. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. We're going to replace all these. Just because. That one's garbage. Put a new seal in there, just like so. Put this back over.
slide this down inside of there. Just like that. And then we're going to replace this seal. That one's garbage. Put this seal in here. Maybe that's not the right one. Just like that. I got one more inside. <clears throat> it's starting to sprinkle out there. I can hear it hitting the roof. So that kind of sucks because I wasn't able to plant any wheat because of this hydraulic problem. But we're going to get it taken care of. Whoops. There's that one. And then this goes back on top of. Oop! Sorry about that. You guys couldn't see what was going on, could you? Yeah. My mistake. Can't win them all, I guess. You. Definitely cannot win them all. And then we still have one more, the shaft seal on the other side we still have to install. So, hopefully you guys kind of see what the inside of a hydraulic pump looks like. And trust me, this is not one of my favorite jobs to do. I actually hate doing these, but sometimes you got to do jobs on a farm that you don't particularly like to do, but they all need to be done. I just typically just snug things up at first. Just so I can kind of get a feel for things and then now now this seal whoop, 
I just dropped it. i to clean the dirt off it now. Just like that. Now, you just snug up them four bolts on the back side, put them to torque, and then this is ready to be installed. Just like that. Well guys, I got the pump back on, back together, or I should say the, the blower motor thing. But I still have a little bit of an oil leak there. So tomorrow I think I'm going to tear it back apart and see if there just maybe wasn't a seal that got sealed right or what. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me clean my lens. There. That's a little gooder. I could see uh, I could see a little something on the lens there. That's why I was figured I'd clean it. Anyway, like I was saying... I still have a little bit of a hydraulic leak there, and that's a problem in this blower motor system. Uh, what it does is air builds a vortex inside this machine, and it blows air through these, these tubes right here. I, don't, uh, I tell you what, because it's so dark in here, let me turn the lights on see if that helps. I might just explain this tomorrow when it's not so not so dark out. Uh, I'll climb up in here. Is this a little better? That's yeah, a little gooder. Anyway, these tubes right here, each one of these tubes goes to a disc down below. Okay, the discs cut a V, a groove in the soil, and then seed from that yellow tank falls down into each one of those tubes, and then the air pushes the seed down, you know, through the whole maze of tubes, to each one of these disc openers. Problem here is with the oil leak in that blower motor it blows hydraulic oil through the seed tubes which causes the seed to stick to the side of the tubes and it also puts hydraulic oil on the seed itself which waterproofs the seed which as you know if a seed is waterproofed it can't get moisture into it to germinate. So that's the other problem. Um, but yeah, if I can get that hydraulic oil leak fixed and then Mother Nature let it quit raining long enough, I can get some wheat planted. So tomorrow I'm going to tear apart that pump again, find out what's going on there. It, I mean, the housing could be cracked for all I know. I, I have no clue. But we're going to tear into that a little deeper tomorrow, figure out what's going on there, because that's a problem. That needs to get solved before we start planting wheat. I did run a three-acre chunk behind the barn here as test, and that's how I realized the hydraulic uh, leak is still there. So, we've got that issue to deal with now but it's getting late it's getting dark it's starting to rain now um, remember the other day when I was telling you about mud building up on the packer wheels and the gauge wheels right here's what I'm talking about see that mud that's built up right there that's a problem you can't be can't be planting in that stuff so um, like I said, I just ran a test plot back there just to kind of see what's going on with the machine.
So at any rate, we'll dig into this a little deeper tomorrow and kind of figure out what's going on. So that's all I have for you today. Um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. You guys have a wonderful night, and we'll talk to you later.